we are diving into how to structure a good old project for optimal results. We'll cover everything from file system organization and coding best practices to essential rules for creating a well-structured project. By the end, you will have a clear roadmap for building efficient and manageable good old projects. First of all, we are going to be taking a look at how to create correctly our file system. In terms of naming, for any kind of folder, scene, script, etc., you have to name it using snake case. Basically, a snake case is, the, is this one. For example, my folder okay everything in lower cases and whenever you want to put a space you put an underscore so for example there i have my folder then i will create my scene and inside of here i will also create my script so this is how things should be named now, in terms of the exact structure that you may want to use uh, for your project, this will depend a lot on your exact needs, purposes, project size, etc. Because, of course, it isn't the same organizing a super small and tiny project than organizing uh, a project that will take months to develop, that will have hundreds or even thousands of files. Because for those more complex cases, maybe you will have to create your own system. But well, one pretty interesting example would be this one, having an assets folder, well, with your different uh, folders, if you have, uh, uh, for example, um, one particular thing that has different assets, for example, in terms of the player of uh, your game, if it is a multiplayer game, you may have different characters, so you could put every character here, in terms of the coin, you may have different coins depending on the level. And then you can have one completely separate scenes folder in which actually not only do you save scenes, but also the uh, different components of that scene. In this case, well, the, the script. So that, for example, here in the coin scene, according to this structure, the only script that is available is this script, okay? Or that it is actually only created in this coin scene. And then, for example, in this scenes folder, you may have one scene, that is the main scene, which probably doesn't have any script on it. It will just have as a child the player, the coins, etc. So, once again, this is something that you can adapt, adapt according to what you actually like, to the size of the project, but this is a pretty clear folder structure. Or other one that could be interesting is breaking scenes into two actually creating one scenes folders and one script folder. So here you would have no sub folders, but you have directly, this is a script. So inside of here, this inside of here, and this will have directly no folder. So we can delete this too. And well, this is other quite straightforward way of organizing uh, your project for smaller games, okay? In terms of uh, GDScript, in terms of the code, I'm going to be following the official style guide from the documentation. And actually here you're going to find even more things because as you can see it is quite a long post. But uh, I will be mentioning the things that I feel that are um, the, the best ones, okay? The ones that are going to be the most used. Signals should be declared with a past tense verb such as entered, skill activated, item collected, etc. You should actually start also using static typing. Basically, instead of declaring your variables like this, you should always uh, type the uh, the type of the variable, in this case, an integer. And you should always be following this exact same syntax. And also, when using static typing, something that you really have to take in account is that, for example, if you are declaring a vector, for example, direction, uh, and you want to static type it, you don't have to do this, okay? that you may think that this is the best practice. No, because you are already telling here, good out, which is the type over here. So instead of doing this, what you should be doing is to add here this other symbol and then delete this static typing. 
This is called inferred types. Because basically now the compiler with this symbol is basically abbreviating the exact same statement that uh, we used to have. Uh, so it is even easier for the compiler and, and for the reader, okay? Because here we will be repeating vector 2 two times and, uh, well, it is not the best thing uh, for the reader. So when you want to static type your variables, you can, uh, in most cases, uh, use just these symbols over here. Constants should always be written exactly like this in what is called constant case and this also applies for when uh, declaring the members of the enum because these are constants as well and by the way for when you want to create an enum um, you, you have to use Pascal case so for example colors I don't know examples for example and finally when declaring enums you always have to make sure to write this trailing comma because if not when you want to add more options okay you're going to actually be losing this comma and this will then lead to an error so always make sure to include that comma to declare functions use snake case and also use a snake case for parameters and well when you are writing numbers by the way in a snake case you don't have to put an underscore okay you always put them all together between functions you always have to leave two empty black lines because usually you just leave one but well between two functions there should always be two boolean operators okay you should never uh, write them you should instead use the english version of them for example and you also have uh, this one that is basically or so you should never use this one you should always use or also another one that is quite used uh, is used is for example if and this means not so for example, for example, instead of doing this, you should type if not, and well, the condition or whatever. When you're creating a comment, you have to leave an empty space over there. But when you are creating a comment to comment out some lines of code, you have to put them right st stick to the uh, comment. Okay, you don't have to leave there an empty space. Everything should be uh, together. When you are using float numbers, you always have to make sure to use that zero and not to skip it. So this line would be incorrect. If you are declaring a color using the hexadecimal number, you have to make sure that uh, you always write it in lower cases. Moving back to enums, you always have to declare them like this. For each member, you have to leave an empty line and you don't have to write them like this. Actually, you mustn't write them like this. Because when you have more and more members, the line is going to become more and more difficult to read. And like this, it is always going to be quite easy to read. So to wrap most of these things up, also here I'm showing you the correct order that you should be following. First of all, you create your different signals. Of course, all this, for example, if you wanted to create other signal, other enum, you would just put it over here. For example, I don't know. Um, let's say collision, for example, and then you just leave there an empty line and start off with the different things that you may have. And of course, if you, for example, don't have an enum, you just write it like this. Okay, this is just in case that you do want to have all these different dif uh, data types. So, um, first of all, you start off with signals in the past tense, then you have your enums with pascal case and the members in constant case you have your constants here once again in constant case then you have your export variables in a snake case then you have your variables that uh, you create uh, yourself and then your on ready variables then when you want to use functions remember that you always have to use have to leave two empty lines and first of all you write those functions that are built in for example ready process unhandled input etc and after that you start writing your own functions always with two lines in between i hope that this video has been helpful and if so make sure that you are subscribed to the channel see you in the next one and bye bye